Hello everyone, now I'm in the meditation forest of Ba Vang Pagoda in Quang Ninh, Vietnam to take part in a special practice uh, that is offering food to the monks on their arms round. And in Buddhism, there are four great debts that we need to keep in mind and repay. The debt of, uh, gra of gratitude to parents, the debt of gratitude to uh, the nation and society, the debt of gratitude to uh, the sentient beings, and the debt of gratitude to the three jewels. And today, with the approval and under the witness of Thay and the Sangha, Buddhists of Bhavang Pagoda are making offerings to those monks. Uh, and uh, through this practice, they will dedicate this merit to the nation and society in the hope that the country is always peaceful and everyone will have the favorable conditions to practice the Buddha's teachings. Uh, and this is according to the Sutra of Seven Practices of No Regression that the Buddha had preached. And now let's watch the special images of the Sangha of Bhavang Pagoda going on arms round. And please incline your mind uh, toward the gratitude of your nation and society. Let's go. Among four great debts of gratitude, the debt of gratitude to the country and society also belongs to the compassionate vow. That is to say, the vow and wish to bring sentient beings happiness. The Buddha taught seven practices of no regression. Of all seven practices, there is one practice that is not only the tradition in Buddha's time, but also brings lay Buddhists a lot of blessings. Namely, Proper provision is made for the safety of monks, nuns, holy ones and arhats. Learning from the meaning of the sutra, the lay Buddhist community of Bavang Pagoda prepare food to offer to monks for four days from the 3rd to the 6th of June 2020, from which the generated merit will be dedicated to the society and nation. For the world will be peaceful if every country is peaceful and then we will have better conditions to practice the Buddha's teachings. Below is the story of seven practices of no regression that the Buddha taught. Thus I have heard, once the Lord was staying at Rajagaha on the mountain called Vulture's Peak. Just then the king Ajatasattu Vedahiputta of Magadha wanted to attack the Vajians. He said, I will strike the Vajians who are so powerful and strong. I will cut them off and destroy them. I will bring them to ruin and destruction. And King Ajitasattu said to his chief minister, Brahman Vasakara, Brahman, go to the blessed Lord. Worship him with your head to his feet in my name. Ask if he is free from sickness or disease. If he is living at ease, vigorously and comfortably, and then say, Lord, King Ajatasattu Vedahiputta of Magadha wishes to attack the Vajians and say, I will strike the Vajians, bring them to ruin and destruction. And whatever the Lord declares to you, report that faithfully back to me, for the Tathagatas never lie. Having had the state carriages harnessed, Vasakara mounted one of them and drove in state from Rajagaha to Vulture's Peak, riding as far as the ground would allow, then continuing on foot where the Lord was. He exchanged courtesies with the Lord, then sat down to one side and delivered the king's message. Now, the venerable Ananda was standing behind the Lord, fanning him, and the Lord said, Ananda, have you heard that the Vajians hold regular and frequent assemblies? I have heard, Lord, that they do. Ananda, as long as the Vajians hold regular and frequent assemblies, they may be expected to prosper and not decline. As long as the Vajians meet in harmony, separate in harmony, and carry on their business in harmony, they may be expected to prosper and not decline. Third, the Vajians do not authorise what has not been authorised already, and do not abolish what has been authorised. 
but proceed according to what has been authorised by their ancient tradition. Fourth, they honour, respect, revere and salute the elders among them and consider them worth listening to. Fifth, they do not forcibly abduct others' wives and daughters and compel them to live with them. Sixth, they honour, respect, revere and salute the Vajian shrines at home and abroad, not withdrawing the proper support made and given before. Seventh, they make proper provisions for the safety of the Arhats, so that such Arhats may come in future to live there, and those already there may dwell in comfort. Then the Lord said to Brahman Vasakara, Once Brahman, when I was in Vasali, I taught the Vajians these seven principles for preventing decline, and as long as they keep to these seven principles, as long as these principles remain in force, the Vajians may be expected to prosper and not decline. If the Vajians keep to even one of these principles, they may be expected to prosper and not decline, far less all seven. Certainly, the Vajians will never be conquered by King Aditisatu by force of arms. Arms bowls of monks are blessing bowls of all sentient beings. Tai Tik Tuk Taiming, the abbot of Barvang Pagoda, says that although monks go on arms rounds to maintain their life, they help all sentient beings cultivate their field of merit. Under the abbot's guidance, the Sangha of Barvang Pagoda dwells in the forest practicing the Buddha's teachings, meditation, self-reflection, arms round. They eat one meal per day only from their arms bowl, sleep in the forest, wake up at night for walking meditation and adopt various Buddhist ascetic practices. This is the time monks begin their monsoon season retreat. Following the Buddha's birthday, during the monsoon season, monks and nuns peacefully reside in one place and devote themselves to their practice. Under the severe weather in Asian summer, the monks walk barefoot on the rough forest roads, full of stones and thorns. The noble path is never easy to walk and stay, and all practitioners have to endure patience and overcome all challenges and hardships to achieve the supreme purpose, that is, perfect enlightenment. Yeah.
So you have seen the image of the Sangha barefoot going on arms round in the forest and felt the gratitude of the Buddhists to the three jewels. We hope that thanks to this cultivation program, our country and our world will always be peaceful and prosperous. Moreover, each of us will develop good minds toward the three jewels and practice the Buddha's teachings to repay the four great debts of gratitude. Namo Shakyamuni Buddha. Dear Thay, we are Buddhists of Golden Daisy Club of practicing six accordances of harmony. Thanks to the nurture of yours and the Sangha, we have vowed to join the one week cultivation program of chanting the Sutra and doing meritorious deeds. According to the Buddha's teachings in the long discussed Sutra, namely seven practices of no regression. Of all those seven practices, there is one practice of making offerings to monks to dedicate the merit and pray for the country's peace. We promise to unite and share the thought of solidarity according to the first practice in the seven practices to practice the Dhamma. Today, you've been pleased to approve and receive our offerings. We pray that talented people and wise leaders will appear to lead the nation and protect the peace of the country, and Buddhism will flourish. We also pray that you will have good health and live a long life in order to guide us through cultivation. We pray that sage will appear soon in this secular world to maintain and propagate the Dharma and save sentient beings. We hope you will witness our wish and prayer of practicing the Dharma. Namo Shakyamuni Buddha. With an earnest mind of gratitude and aspiration for the merit of the Three Jewels, together with the mind of gratitude and repaying kindness, especially the mind of repaying the four great debts of gratitude, Buddhists of Golden Daisy Club practicing six accordances of harmony under Bhavang Pagoda have sincerely vowed to attend the at-home cultivation program in one week and make offerings to the Sangha in order to pray for the country's peace and the appearance of wise leaders. You also pray that sages will appear soon in this world to help everyone save the country and propagate the Dharma. The Sangha sees that is a very good vow, having learned, penetrated and practiced the Dharma. All of you have actualized such a good vow to pray for the country's prosperity, which is very precious. When the Sangha and lay Buddhists practice the true Dharma, Devas will definitely support us to achieve good things. Today, on behalf of the Sangha, I wish your good vows will be soon fulfilled. I hope that you and your family will live a long life, be healthy, beautiful and happy. And I also hope that you will be reborn into noble realms, especially have the connection to the true Dharma, to cultivate yourself, to soon attain liberation from the cycle of birth and death. That is the wish of the Sangha to all of you today. Sato Sato
Oh, my. 